Hi, my name is Christopher Evans, and I am the lead technical animator on the Digital Humans team here at Epic Games. Uh, I wanted to take a couple minutes today to go over some of the hardware settings in Unreal Engine and some of the new features that allow MetaHumans to really work well on different hardware platforms. So from kind of day one with MetaHumans, the goal was to not just make really high fidelity digital humans that kind of everybody expects from, from Epic, but kind of enable anybody to make that, kind of democratize the creation of that, but also allow them to run on multiple hardware platforms and really make usable characters that can be used in games and have all of the features that you know, a, a AAA game studio or an indie game studio uh, expects in order to use those characters in a real-time application, whether it be on a virtual production stage, you know, or on a on a Switch or an Android device. So that that's a really tall order. I don't know of anybody that's really done that before. Um, it means getting the same assets working with levels of detail across many different hardware devices. So the MetaHumans have eight levels of detail and you can kind of walk through those different levels of detail depending on your current context. So the kind of easiest way to do that is to go up here and tweak the engine scalability settings. Um, this is kind of analogous to in a video game where you kind of set um, different rendering characteristics based upon how beefy your, your PC is or whatever. For those of you who aren't aware, you can type stat space FPS down here in the output log, and this will kind of tell you what the current frame rate is. Um, if you're not sure where the output log is, you can go down to Window, Developer Tools, Output Log, and I've always got the output log open here on a tab just so I can kind of see what's going on. I'll refer back to it later. Um, you can get quite a bit of feedback about what's happening with the engine and stuff from down there. So if I go to the settings, engine scalability settings, you know, I can walk from low to high to medium to epic to cinematic. And as I'm clicking these, I mean, you can see the image changing in the background, but you can also see all of these different CVARs being set that are changing different features in the engine. They're turning off, you know, hundreds of different features in the engine and changing different scalability settings in the engine. So, I mean, you can see how it kind of affects the, the frame rate, but it also, you can see all of those different CVARs that are, that are being changed under the hood. So, with all of these different LODs that I had mentioned, one thing I wanted to talk about is a new feature called the LOD Sync Component. And if you select the character's blueprint here, you'll see this LOD Sync down, down here. And there's a lot of different components syncing and a lot of different custom LOD mappings and things. But the TLDR here for this feature is that in order to make really high fidelity human characters uh, and have them kind of walk right up to you in a game or in a cinematic and then you know the cinematic is over and you're right back into the game right back into the story or whether it's virtual reality or some kind of live experience in order to have characters look the best they can you have to be able to turn off certain features as they recede away into the distance so the Lodsing component what it does is it essentially creates different buckets and you can sync many different parameters and meshes across uh, different LOD levels. So here you see that it says we have eight LODs. That's because the head which drives a lot of the LODing, it has eight levels of detail. The body has four levels of detail. And what the LOD sync component can do is it can say like, hey, every two levels of detail of the head, I want to change one level of detail of the body. And why that's important is because when you're changing mesh levels of detail and there's seams involved, you really want to make sure that you always have, you know, head level of detail two with body level of detail one or whatnot, because you need the, the vertices to line up, the skin weights to line up, the blend shapes to line up. Um, 
why I'm also pointing this out is, let's say that you're on a virtual production stage, <clears throat> or you are kind of game location scouting, or you are making, um, you're doing a layout pass, and you're dropping a lot of different characters into the level. You can go ahead and you can do, you can force the LOD sync component to be like LOD4. <clears throat> And as you saw, the face, the, the vertices and geometry on the face got a bit faceted. Uh, the hair is now a card representation and not a strand representation. But, you know, now the character is a lot more performant and you can drop a lot more down. You can lot all the way down to level 7. Um, and it's, you know, and there's 8 levels, but it's, it's 0 index, so it's 0 through 7. And as you navigate the lot levels, we are dropping, like joints, you know, a uh, hundred different poses of anatomical joints that keep volume on the character and certain rigging, uh, shaders, and different, uh, you know, the strand-based hair to card-based hair. There's a lot of different, it's not just geometric complexity. There are a lot of settings that are <clears throat> associated with these different buckets, if you will. If I set this back to negative one, that means I want it to be automatic. And with it on negative one, I can go in and I can, you can see exactly when the hair pops to a um, card representation. The hair strands are not actually polygonal, so they don't right now render when we go to wireframe view. They're actually real strands on the GPU, which is, is pretty awesome. So that is the LodSync component. And while I'm on hair strands, I wanted to mention there is a, a CVAR that even in LOD 0, you can go ahead and disable hair strands. And you saw that little pop. And what this did is it blended to a card version of LOD 0 hair. Um, we understand that even um, on some current gen consoles, having multiple characters on screen with very, very like feature film fidelity hair. Uh, it can be taxing on a GPU if you're doing other operations like have AI or physics running. Uh, so we are shipping metahumans with a LOD0 set of card hair. And that's what you see here. I can go back and I will turn on the wireframe again. So this is the high fidelity hair cards. I will mention that when you're in this mode right now, um, it appears like the lashes are gone. The lashes are actually there. It's just when you pop into the game, the game's not evaluating right now. As soon as the game is evaluating, you see that they popped on. Um, so that's a setting that if you never wanted to have strand hair and you always had, um, strands disabled, you could put that in your any file and you could set the shader to always be there. We have to manage that shader relationship because when the strands are rendering, we don't want you to see the card-based eyelashes. But they are there and that's how you can turn them on. I'm going to go ahead and turn the hair strands back on. Um, so one other thing would be ray tracing. Let's say that you don't feel that you need ray tracing, you have DirectX 12, um, but you can go into the project settings and up here if you just search for ray tracing, you can disable ray tracing. And that is gonna require an engine restart, but already your character should be quite a bit more performant if you disable ray tracing in this scene. Um, one of the last things I wanted to touch on would be DirectX 12 versus DirectX 11. Now, some people were having issues where they have Windows 7 and they don't have access to DirectX 12. So you can go into your project settings. And if we go down to platforms windows, we can set the default RHI and I can set that to DirectX 11. And now when I restart the engine, I'm going to start in a DirectX 11 mode. Uh, RHI, I believe, is the rendering hardware interface. I'm not a, a graphics guy, I'm not a graphics engineer, but um, if, you, if you just wanted to know. So I'm gonna leave it in DirectX 12 right now. And the way to query that, you can type R dot 
RHI dot, and there's only one C bar left, it's name. And if I query that, it tells me I am in D3D12 uh, hardware interface right now. So you're on Windows 7 and you can't even load the engine because it requires being loaded in DirectX 12 in order to set it to DirectX 11. That can be, that, that's a challenge. So I'm going to show you how to kind of go into the project. So here's the project folder. It's going to be in your Unreal Projects folder, metahumans config. Then there is a default engine.ini.ini file. You can search in here and find, find default graphics RHI. That is the project setting that we had just changed. If you go ahead and just delete that, save the file, that's going to set you back to default. And what default actually is, is DirectX 11. So if I close out the engine and I reload that project, we will again query the RHI name and I believe it will be running in DirectX 11 mode. So um, CVARs are persistent across sessions, which is awesome. So if I query the RHI name, you see it's D3D11. So that is how you can load up the project if you don't have access to DirectX 12. And um, you know this, this stuff still looks still looks pretty high fidelity. DirectX 11, you just won't have access to some of those um, DirectX 12 features. And if you are just mousing around the demo and you didn't know, you can press G, and G removes um, those game meshes. So that's about it. Uh, I briefly went over all the different scalability settings, all of the LOD levels, how LOD sync works, how you can use force LOD to drop a bunch of different metahumans into the level. Um, if you're a AAA developer, really look at LodSync. LodSync is really awesome. It was developed by Lena Halper here at Epic, and it really allows you to make the highest quality characters that you can uh, on any given uh, hardware that you're on. But you'll also see how we use it to drive different LOD levels. Um, the characters have very complex rigging uh, and different things that kind of slough off as the character walks away. Um, on the face and in the body. So then we talked about how to disable the hair strands and that there is a lot zero representation of cards that that's in there uh, and how to disable ray tracing, um, how to go to DirectX 11 RHI mode and how to kind of boot the engine into DirectX 11 if you can't open it on your current hardware platform. So as I said it was very important to us that these characters can scale and be used in many different situations. You know, this is about you all telling your stories. We, we can't even come up with the different situations that you're going to want to be using MetaHumans in. We're really looking for your feedback uh, when it comes to those different uh, hardware platforms. And from now till release, we're really going to be working to try to get the characters looking as best as they can regardless of which hardware platforms they're running on but that's a real challenge because you know we're not going to make characters specifically just for a particular hardware platform the goal is to make scalable characters that work on a wide you know, kind of a range of hard array of hardware platforms but thanks for taking the time to listen to me ramble on, and we really hope that you guys are enjoying this sample of MedHumans, and can't wait to see uh, what people do with the tools uh, once we release them later this year. Thanks a lot. Bye.